Hi everyone, it's TTL back with another video for you and today we're going to find out whether the 5600X or the 11600K is really the gaming processor to have. So when we tested the first time around in our main review of the 11600K and the i9, but we'll forget that because that's, yeah, anyway, we tested the 282080 Ti which is what we've done all of the CPUs on, and that just means that we can compare them and it's, you know, it's, it's fairer. But what we've done now is we've popped a 3080 in to really stress and uh, hopefully find the differences between the two processors. I've done it, tested them with 14 games on the three big resolutions, and both of the processors have been done at stock, and they've also been done with an overclock. So we have a lot of data to go through today and I've also got some really cool side-by-side -side gaming footage so you can actually visually see the difference in FPS as well. Okay, so I am still here. I am still doing videos but we i've done a lot of testing on this one for you without doing a dropping an entire system off the table now in the comments on the original video for the i5 and the i9 a lot of people ask why didn't i use a 3080 but if i was going to use a 3080 it would have meant i had to test every single one of the old cpus all over again and that would have been a testing nightmare because it takes me over a day just to do uh, one processor at stock or overclock so when you multiply that out it's a crazy amount of time but what i have done with this is I've now used, rather than the few gaming results that we do with a CPU review, because normally we do a few sort of like CPU heavy hitters, with this one, I've done the full ga gaming graphics card suite. So this is actually our graphics card test rig, and we use the same rig to test all the graphics cards on. That's how we keep it fair, and that's how we can compare. But all we've done is we've taken the 3950X out, and then we've put a 5600X in. Now this is, the Intel test rig that I did the i5 and the i9 on. So what I had to do with this was actually install all of the other games, which was hundreds of gigabytes of downloads. I think it took over a day just to sort that out. But anyway, so uh, spec-wise, they are actually fairly similar. The only real noticeable difference is the Intel rig has got the AX 1500i in and the graphics card one has the AX 1600i in. Now, they don't need 1500 or 1600 watts. It's just horrific headroom. This one specifically, if I was to do multi-card setups, it's just to make life easier from a reviewer standpoint because I don't build rigs specifically for one video and then do some testing. All of our results are normally, other than this one, are uh, able to uh, be directly compared because we do things in a very set and orderly fashion. So the uh, overclock, so we did stock. That was literally with the Intel, we went in 3600 me memory and we enabled XMP. With the AMD stock, everything on auto, just enabled DOCP, 3600 megahertz memory as well. The overclock, they ended up both sitting at 4.8 gigahertz. My 5600 is a good one and I can get it very stable at um, 4.8. I can do AVX runs and everything on that. And uh, with the Intel, you need to remember that the single core boost is 4.9. So when we end up doing the 4.8 gigahertz all core overclock, we are actually taking it back a little bit to be able to get all the cores in. Uh, but I think that works out quite well because you're going to be able to then see whether you should be running just like ABT or the um, uh, an all-core overclock versus auto and things like uh, multi-core enhancement and stuff like that. Now, I have a lot of graphs for you. I have this big giant graph for you, but don't worry because I have got some video footage with the games to play side by side so you can visually see AMD versus Intel on the same screen. But with the big graph, if we zoom in, there's a few that I am going to kind of discuss with you. And that is, if you look at Dirt 5, F1 2020, and Gears 5. So F1 2020 favours AMD. Gears 5 looks like it favours Intel. Uh, Dirt 5, again, if you look above, 
looks like it favours AMD as well. So, so you're looking at those graphs. Red is AMD. The white and the grey is Intel. Uh, the white is the overclock. The grey is the stock. And then you've got light red is the uh, AMD overclock. And then the dark red is the 5600X. I also did do some Shadow of the Tomb Raider stuff. Now, the reason why I've done these with uh, benchmark games is because then the frames should be easier for me to match and for us to look at as it's playing around. And it's also very easily replicatable for us to do the testing and for us to share on video. So, how did they look? Okay, so on to F1, go in the graphic options, going to set it to 1920 by 1080 so that we can max the FPS and test the differences between the CPU. Uh, and then benchmark mode, we do it with Singapore and then very wet. Again, maximum stress on this. So, first of all, whole page 11600K. You can see the results in the top left hand corner. But not long after the start, there we go, the 5600X pans in and now you can see the two results side by side. I do need to try and make the uh, overlay a little bit bigger on the CPU test rig. You can see I've changed it already on the 5600X, which is the graphics card test system. And I'm talking over it because uh, if we turn the volume down on the game footage, then we avoid uh, possible issues with like, um, like the game developers and stuff because we're showing the footage. Even though it's a review and it's not being stolen, it, it just it saves issues. But keep a different an eye between the difference between the two because the uh, Intel rig will be in front on this one and that will also show up now when the results pop up and you can analyse the difference between the two and then our own results are there but they are not just 1080, you've got the 1440 and the 4K results on those ones and don't forget you can pause if you would like to see more. On to Gears 5, you can see me making all the adjustments to turn the minimum frame rate and stuff off, set to a 1920 by 1080, and then just run their own benchmarks in ultra settings as well, it's how we've always tested this one. And again we start with the i5 on the left, as it's the newest processor, and then we bring the contender in on the right hand side in a second, here it comes, there we go, and Essentially, you can watch the live frames per second. I've synced them up pretty much perfectly. I hope someone will tell me I haven't. But anyway, it's just so that you can see a very, very visual representation between the two. And uh, in 1080, this one does seem to favour the Intel, which is why I've been doing one for, one against, so that you can see the differences between the two. And you can make your own mind up whether it's enough of a change for you and maybe help make your decision on whether which one you're going to buy. Now these are the results that it spits out at the end. Obviously this is just the 1080p runs for the two that we've just done, that's the actual data it spat out. But then with this graph you can see the 1440p results and the 4k results as well. And quickly on to Dirt 5, 1920 by 1080 again, you can see ultra high and then the benchmark just runs itself. So we start off as always with the Escort Cosworth, but with the i5 from Intel. And you can see the 5600X has come in from the left, loads of Lancers, and then all of a sudden we end up with loads of the same s -coses. Anyway, you can see the frames per second difference. Most important thing with this one is normally the 5600X has the edge. So it's the opposite to F1 that we saw before. This is very much a game that favours the AMD. And that uh, it doesn't matter whether we use the benchmark, do it actual gameplay, AMD always pulls in front. There's actually a little bit more to be said if you're using an AMD graphics card as well, but the CPU does still make a big difference. Now the uh, benchmark is just about to pull out some results for us and it will put the two side by side so get ready to hit the pause button there they are uh, but what we can do is that's only for 1080 obviously but then we can bring in our own graph which shows the 1440 and the 4k results you can pause on if you like before we move on to the next game 
on to shadow of the Tomb Raider. Turn the resolution back to 1080, again, just for maximum frames so that we can really stress the CPUs out. And then what we do is just run the inbuilt benchmark. Now, with the inbuilt benchmark, there are quite a lot of sections to it. So we're just going to show you the very first one today. Um, now, all of the results that we've done today have been at stock. Now, at stock, the uh, Intel will be just in front. And when the 5600X eventually pans in in just a second, you'll see that it is just a smidge in front. But I do want to point out that in the graph, at the end, you'll see that if you add an overclock onto these, the Ryzen 5600X actually does have the edge. And it's quite strange that they flip like that, which is the reason why I still included Rise of the Tomb Raider, because we've had a couple of games that support Intel, a couple of games that support AMD, and with this one, just the overclock actually flips the favoritism around. So I thought that would be a quite an interesting one for us to close up with. Obviously, also, you get the 1440p results and the 4K results. So really, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, there's a lot for us to talk about and digest with this lot of data in the graph. So I hope you like that because the actual editing of those bits was fairly daunting. I've, we've done it before, but it was just I wanted to get it as close as I could to being almost perfect. And I think it kind of shows quite well. Now, in reality, the difference between these two actually depends on the games. So some games do seem to favour the Intel and some do seem to favour the uh, AMD. But weirdly, what I did kind of notice was with the AMD, you're almost better off leaving it stop. Just let it do its own thing. It's a very kind of easy plug and play kind of processor. The Intel, the overclock did uh, come into play with some of the games. If you look in the big graph that I spoke to you about before, mainly it's things like Total Warhammer that are very heavy multi-threaded uh, CPU games that did favour the overclock. But more often than not, randomly again, and I don't like saying this based on the fact that OC3D stands for overclock 3D, they both actually did really well at stock. Um, and that's just because of the fact that the boosting and the technology behind that with both of these processes come on in leaps and bounds that you, it does pick those perfect cores to be able to push the boost that little bit further. Now, what does muddy the waters is we can talk honestly about this. There's a lot of people out there that just have taken a step back from Intel. The constant updates, the, the delays. So the 11th gen should have been the 10th gen and like it, the 10th gen was a stock gap and now the motherboards have got really expensive because now Z590 supports PCI Express 4 as well, which means you have to have loads more components on the boards and that then means that they're much more expensive. But we had already kind of made peace with the fact that uh, the X570 boards were expensive. But this is where it gets complicated because with the AMD, for argument's sake, you can buy B550. Then you can get the B560 stuff from Intel as well. And that's something I'm going to be looking at in the future. But weirdly, and I say this not being a blue fanboy and not being an AMD fanboy, but the Intel is actually cheaper. And, you know, it, they trade places. There isn't really in particular, a, uh, a processor here that stands out. Some of the games do just work better with the AMD. Some of the games do just work better with the Intel. Now, at the time of making this video, the Intel processor is 250 quid. Uh, the AMD processor, in a lot of places, is 350, but I have seen at Scan in the UK, they've got it for uh, just over 300 pounds. Or was it? No, it's 299. So that puts them within 50 pounds difference. Now, the performance where it's kind of trading off, if you really wanted to get to the nitty gritty, you could look at the games that you are more than likely going to be playing and then make a choice based on that. The other thing that you do need to remember is we've done the 1080 test. We've shown you 1080 because that stresses the CPUs out the most. So if we're gonna find a bottleneck, which will be caused by the processor, it will be done at 1080 but you can see in all the split down graphs that I uh, put up for you as well,
that you can see the 1440 and the 4K results were all there as well. I personally think that 1440 is the performance sweet spot and it's a good place to stop between uh, things looking nice and high frames per second. Uh, obviously, with the 3080, I know everyone's going to say, well, we can't get them. If you are lucky enough to have one or you can get one, it, you know, at the end of the day, I know things are difficult with supply at the moment, but that doesn't mean I should stop testing this stuff for if and when, or if you are lucky enough, or when you're lucky enough, you can come back and use this as a reference tool. So I'm just trying to keep the information flowing because at the end of the day, we like doing and watching this stuff because we're active hardware enthusiasts. We are members of the PC master race. So it's weird to say that Intel has the kind of value win on this one. Um, and I think that's probably the only thing in reality that they've got going for them at the moment. Because before launch, we were kind of saying, oh, you know, Intel, if they're cheaper, then they're just going to need to have stock and they might win some sales. But for whatever's happened over the last few weeks, there are a lot of 5600Xs now in stock. I think it might be because of this. But that's great because I think that's why prices are starting to drop and we're actually getting competition in the market, which is great for you guys at home because then that gives you choice, which means people are going to be arguing for who you spend your money with. Both of the platforms are fairly expensive. We also know that the Intel platform is going to be ended at the end of the year, maybe the beginning of next year, but we're also at the end of life for AM4. So then you've got the choice, upgrade options from that point. You're going to be, they're both PCR Express 4 now, so with the i5, you might pick up an i7 or an i9, that's an option. But it's the same goes for the AM4 platform because you could come up to the Ryzen 7 or even the Ryzen 9 later on down the line. So you do have a CPU upgrade path, but you're not going to be able to drop in a brand new next generation CPU if you invest in this platform now. So between the two, Intel costs less. So they win value, but with all due respect, the AMDs have the enthusiasts backing or definitely the vocal enthusiast backing at the moment and it is really nice to see the two like this but what's really strange is the fact that if we'd have gone back three years Intel would have been more expensive and suddenly now they've had to come in under the red team's budget so things are shifting and I find that personally really interesting because I think that shows that favour was leaning towards the red. So now Intel are now starting to drop their prices to try and bring people back. But in reality, if you don't need to be buying a brand new system right at this moment and you can string it out for another year, why not wait to see what the next gen brings? It's definitely a difficult time and I don't particularly want to be telling people to stop and wait and because it, it becomes never ending but with the fact that graphics cards are so very difficult to get hold of at the moment and there are supply and demand I mean we, we know that cases are getting more difficult to get hold of because of shipping costs I could make another video just on this topic so maybe I will be quiet and I've given you the data there's been a lot of testing it was a week's worth of testing just to make this single video so I hope you enjoy it and also I hope it's something that you might want to share with your friends or come back and reference to later. But thank you very much for staying tuned and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy the way I try and go about this sort of stuff. But for now, at least, this is the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Ding! Love you, sis.